When Sonic the Hedgehog released in 1991, Sega had major plans for the character. And part of that plan was global licensing. Meaning, Sega would license the property to multiple companies in multiple countries to make merchandise, comics, television shows, and more. In its over 30 year history, Sonic has had many different interpretations of its world and cast of characters, each more insane than the last. You got one where he's in a rock band with his brother and sister, one where he's in a world ruled by Robotnik, one where he's in a world ruled by Robotnik, but he's got a good attitude towards it. Good on you, Sonic. It's very apparent how lenient Sega was with people interpreting their character. If I were to venture a guess, I'd have to say this was to make him as successful as possible in each region, as there's no way other people would ever find out about them, and lead to multiple contradicting interpretations of the character that would be discussed on a worldwide forum in the- Oh, that's what wound up happening. While this varied approach allowed us to view the character through multiple unique lenses, not all of these were successful, and after a certain point, as the world became more connected with the dawn of social media, Sega realized these multiple interpretations would be a huge problem with branding their character, and so they began to rein him back into their stable, and made strict guidelines that all future licensees would have to abide by, something the fans would dub the Sega Mandates. <laughs> A video breaking down these mandates would take a long time, and maybe explored in other videos at a later date, like characters not being allowed to wear pants, male hedgehogs can only have super forms, and Shadow isn't allowed to have… friends? But for now, we'll focus on two. Let's talk about emotions. I'm quite knowledgeable about them. I've been to multiple therapists who've told me I was a social path. I don't know what that means, but I can only assume it makes me qualified to talk about the deep personal emotional machinations of cartoon rodents and big bald scientists. Excuse me for one second. Of course. Having said that, there are two specific mandates of what emotion I want to focus on today. One, Sonic is not allowed to be too emotional, and two, no game-centric characters can enter into a relationship. Hold the phone, Splash Dash. You're gonna spend an entire video on the topic of Sonic relationships? Yes. While not strictly about relationships, I want to dissect these two mandates, figure out why these decisions were made, how restrictive these rules are, and how I feel it ultimately damages the brand. After all, as I've stressed many, many, many times before, turning Sonic into this safe mascot character is completely antithetical to his original selling point, you know, a cool dude with attitude. Before we continue, I want to specify something. This is not about shipping war stuff. I do not care about Sonic shipping, I'm not a shipper. If you like Sonic and Amy? Cool. Sally and Sonic? Awesome. Sonic and Shadow? Perfect. The goal of this video is specifically to break down relationships in the Sonic games and comics. In order to figure out why these new mandates were made, let's discuss some of the factors that helped contribute to them in the first place. We'll break this down into four key talking points. His relationships with Amy, Princess Sally, and Princess Elise, and then ended up with Sonic himself. When you think about the topic of relationships in the Sonic series, your mind probably jumps to Amy Rose. Not only are hearts heavily associated with the character, I mean hell, that's what Sonic has to collect to see her in Sonic Frontiers. But for years and years, her most defining trait is that she loved Sonic. It was in almost all of her character bios from around that time. Every game she appeared in, she was obsessive and stalkerish over the guy. Her plot in Heroes is literally her tracking him down for no reason other than to force him into wedlock. In 06, she openly admits that if Sonic was the one who causes the destruction of the world in the future, she would still stand by him. Okay, maybe that... Maybe that goes a tad beyond love, but I think the biggest issue most could agree on with her character was that they pushed this behavior too far, where you couldn't go two seconds without her bringing up Sonic in some way. Her character was intrinsically tied to him, and because of that, she didn't stand on her own two feet enough. Everything she did, she did for Sonic. In CD, she went to Little Planet to meet a hero. Adventure, she's longing for the adventurous Dez when she hung out with him. And while it is cool she ultimately did strike out on her own in the end, she still has to make it very clear that she's doing it because of Sonic. In Adventure 2, she ignores her goal from the end of the first game and just wants to release Sonic from prison and then just, then just hangs around. She does convince Shadow to help them in the end with an extremely flimsy argument to save humanity though, so I guess that works. Good job, Amy. Gold star. Heroes wants to find Sonic. 06 wants to find Sonic. Unleashed wants to find Sonic. Oh, oh, no, I get it! While Adventure was a step in the right direction for sure, it still ultimately feels as anything she does is ultimately for or in spite of Sonic. It's always about him. And that's kind of shitty, all things considered. To have one of your only female characters be hopelessly in love with a guy, and with the dawn of social media and a more conscious effort to better represent women, I bet Sega was more than willing to backtrack in her more 
affectionate tendencies and turn her into a, let's be honest, boringly confident plain Jean. She likes Sonic, sure, but she's ultimately just a nice, competent heroine. Her her heroine. And while that isn't a bad thing at all, it's ultimately boring. Even though her sole character trait of being obsessed with Sonic could have been seen as problematic, at least it was entertaining at times. This way, I'll be able to keep my eyes on you. Ugh. Sally is the only Sonic love interest whom they would genuinely try to delve into the romance of on a regular basis, both in Sonic Sad AM and the Archie comics. It's even canon to the Archie timeline that Sonic ends up marrying her and having kids together, resulting in Sonic and Sally being the new king and queen, ushering in a new era of peace and prosperity. This also implies that out of all the Sonic media, this is the only canon where Sonic the Hedgehog fucks. Sadie Anne mostly focuses on the will they won't they dynamic, with a flimsy love triangle between her, Sonic, and Antoine. Like, imagine wanting to marry a Frenchman. This is probably where the relationship is at its strongest, with lots of genuinely fun scenes of them interacting dynamically and having genuine chemistry. Honestly, I think it's one of the best written relationships in any Sonic media. Like, ever. They're delightfully compelling to watch. It's also quite balanced and doesn't wind up taking over the central conflict of the show or halted in its tracks. It's executed very well. In contrast, the Archie comics goes balls to the walls into the relationship bullshit. Getting together, splitting up, the way they're good together, where their ideals clash. There's a whole arc where Antoine and Sally are about to get married, and this is what one of the covers looks like. It's wild. We'll leave it at that. The important point here in Archie Land is that Sonic and Sally spark a romance and the series does not hesitate to drop the action to focus on the drama. To give a brief recap, early Archie was very jokey about the relationship with no sort of drama or whatever. Very clear that they loved each other and would ultimately end up together, it was mostly treated as a joke. Then, this Pepe Le Pew looking ass came along. Jeffrey St. John is where all hell broke loose and really turned up the soap opera drama to 11. Thanks, Ken. From here on, a lot of the plot was either in tandem or backseated to the relationship drama of these guys, and it went on forever. And somehow, it was almost way worse. Ken, wh wh what are you doing? This all culminated in issue 134 which sees Sally ask for Sonic to give up on fighting Eggman and join her in ruling the kingdom. To which he says, he can't, he has people to protect. Which makes her scream at him in front of everyone, yelling about how she can't see them having a real relationship together if she has to worry about him risking his life on a daily basis, resulting in the dreaded slap, which Archie fans still rant and rave about to this day. Where Sally calls Sonic selfish and slaps him across the face. Selfish because he risks his life for others. Yeah... Women, am I right, fellas? <laughs> of course, Sally and Sonic's love story continued until the Sega Mandiates, where after that they kind of like looked at each other like they loved each other, but they couldn't go into it. This was a nail in the coffin for a good chunk of Sonic fans who were sick of seeing this soap opera drama unfold. And that they just wanted all these romances, you know, games, comics, or otherwise, to end. They wanted Sonic to be a free-spirited adventurer, who had no time for romance as it would ultimately just tie him down. And while I can't sympathize with that view, I don't think that means the idea shouldn't be explored at all. Just because these two ideas conflict doesn't mean they shouldn't be allowed to tell stories that show him being torn between these two things. Like I said, conflict, not inherently contradict. The guy in a robot, he's allowed to have these varied emotions. You know, like people do. Free spirit doesn't mean lack of emotional attachment. When folks say they want this stuff in Sonic, whether it be in shows, comics, or games, they aren't saying they want a dating sim. They just want him to show some kind of deeper emotion and relationship aside from... Cool, bro. Sonic wanting to be free and not tied down but still wanting some romance in his life could and has led to some interesting, compelling stories over the years, but it has to be done properly. It's just unfortunate that with Archie, overall, you know, it wasn't. Thanks, Ken. I can see why people may not like Sally over this issue, but I'd put that more so dying on poor writing rather than Sally herself being a bad character. That's right, I'm a Sally stan, what of it? There are also the people who don't like Sally purely because they're a Sonic Emi fan and seeing Sonic interested in someone else makes them rip their hair out. But any- Sally isn't the only princess Sonic has gotten with, however. Princess Elise, famously featured in Sonic 06, the prime example of damsel in distress whom Sonic rescues again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And needs to keep her safe after not only realizing Dr. Eggman wants the Chaos Emerald in her necklace, which she... she has for some reason, but also because she has Iblis, the Flames of Disaster, trapped inside her soul which will be unleashed if she ever cries. Again, 
for some reason. Through these trials and tribulations, Sonic and Elise develop a relationship with each other, which is honestly kind of one-sided on Elise's part. Sonic looks a little uncomfortable here after she flirts with him. This relationship is pretty mean, Don, and for good reason, I say. As a kid, I find their dynamic cute, but there really is no reason why Sonic should take such interest in this random lady. Like, at least Sally joined in on missions and helped put a stop to Eggman. At least it's just a princess who prays a lot. Like, if you're into those religious types, that's fine and all, but... You know, I honestly think if they stripped Elise's romantic feelings out of the game, people would be far more appreciative of the relationship. I always liked the little moments of character building Elise had. One example being Amy helping Elise escape from Eggman during the Silver Campaign, and they start talking about these guys they both like, neither realizing they're talking about the same person. It'd be better if it was framed as to how Amy loves Sonic, but Elise admires him more platonically, but, you know, that thought animal on human love was more ideal. I also really enjoy their dynamic from Sonic's point of view, where he's just trying to show her how to be free and enjoy the little things in life. And because she has no direct family left in her life, she latches on to the affection that Sonic is showing her. I never really took Sonic as being in love with Elise in that game. It always came off more like he was trying to help her face her inner demons and showing care for her instead of love. Ultimately, none of this matters, as after receiving the day with a kiss and blowing out the flames once and for all, the events of the game reset and Sonic and Elise go about their lives having never met. Speaking of, before they blow out the flame, she openly admits that she doesn't care if the world is destroyed if it means having to say goodbye to Sonic. Jesus, what is it with women and compromising any sense of morality for this guy? Ultimately, though, it's all about Sonic in the end, right? Just like Amy said. While Sonic has had many conflicting, different interpretations, even within the main canon, a few characteristics are almost always intact. 1. His attitude and snark. 2. Loves freedom and hates oppression. And 3. Hates water. A lot of different Sonic lore has come and gone, and a lot of people cannot mutually agree upon a definitive Sonic. Sega's mandates are attempting to remedy this, but I think it's too much and stifles the character. Sonic isn't allowed to be in a relationship, he's not allowed to lose, he's not allowed to show too much emotion, and he isn't even allowed to wear pants. That's going too far. This results in a sterilized, commercial-friendly Sonic. He's malleable. He can be put in anything in any situation. But as a consequence, he's just boring now. Even a game like Frontiers, which has made vast improvements on characterizing Eggman, Teals, Knuckles, and Amy, still has Sonic be this cool dude who gets the job done no problem. Even when he gets corrupted by cyberspace, he winds up okay in the end, and it doesn't really seem to phase him at all. Confidence is one thing, but he seems to be like not really caring about the intensity of the situation that much overall. There's some very rare dialogue that happens where he shows his weakness or desire to have friends by his side, but again, very rare. Most people would have missed it. I miss when Sonic was allowed to have banter with his friends more personably. In Sonic Battle, Rouge would flirt and toy with Sonic and he would just kind of roll with it for fun. In Riders, he's grossed out by Amy's advances. I miss when Knuckles would get embarrassed and bashfully thank Rouge for giving him the Emerald Pieces back. How about Teals and Cosmo in the third season of Sonic X? They establish this cute little childlike relationship between the two, and it ends with Teals literally having to f***ing shoot her. All the dynamics used to be varied. All the characters just interact pretty interchangeably with each other now. Knuckles would talk to Teals like he's a kid in Sonic Heroes. Rouge would show appreciation for Shadow and he would reciprocate. Now everyone is just... just friendly. It no longer feels like a group of characters who just so happen to live in the same world and run into each other every now and then. It feels like it's this little tiny community that all revolves around Sonic, and it's just... It's not as interesting to me. Let Sonic think about love, loss, and all that jazz. He doesn't need to be in a romantic relationship, but let him explore it again. If anything, I hope that Frontiers and this new lore trust they've got going on will push things back in that direction. Having Sonic be a complete character and influencing his friend's arcs is a good compromise. Harks back to the best interpretation of the character, in my opinion, with Sonic and the Black Knight. But I'll still miss the times where he was flawed, unsure, made mistakes, and didn't always see eye to eye with people. I like that in the Archie comics, Sonic is just some guy, a part of the Freedom Fighters. Exceptional for sure, but another hero among dozens and dozens across the world. I can't help but prefer that to a world where Sonic is treated as some kind of guardian angel. The world falling into ruin the second he steps out to buy some milk. In the right hands, it works. Very well. But only time will tell what happens next. All I know is that, for once, I'm looking forward to what they're cooking. Just let him wear pants! Speed.